Welcome back. We continue discussing pediatric vaccinations. Back on the line with me is Nasia Sufi, the head of the vaccinations unit and export market at Sanofi Pasteur Vaccines in South Africa. Uh, Nasia, before our connection was broken, you were telling me about the grave risks associated uh, with parents not vaccinating. Um, what we've seen amid COVID-19 and lockdown is a lot of people afraid to go to their local clinics to seek medical care. And presumably the same has applied to parents vaccinating their children. Have you seen a drop in compliance with the vaccination schedule? Absolutely. So in the initial stages of the lockdown, we had already reported a 27% decline in childhood immunizations in the country. Uh, and the reason for this, like you had said, is because parents were very afraid to take their children across to healthcare facilities because in their minds, they see healthcare facilities as hotspots mm. uh, for COVID-19, where they expect COVID-19 cases to congregate in order to get care. So many parents perceive that by taking their children in, by taking themselves into these healthcare facilities, they are exposing themselves and their children to the virus. But what we need to be very mindful of is that the moment there is a decline in immunization, we create the perfect breeding ground for outbreaks of vaccine preventable diseases. The moment immunization drops, immediately we are vulnerable to outbreaks of measles, whooping cough, um, uh, polio, God forbid. Mm. Um, so whilst I fully appreciate the concerns of parents, I'd like to reassure them that the World Health Organization, working together with the National Institute of Communicable Disease, have put together clear guidelines to guide healthcare facilities in terms of how to secure their healthcare workers, as well as parents and children who present themselves to healthcare facilities for immunization during this period. But please, please ensure that your child is fully vaccinated during this time. Hmm. Now, see, is a 27% drop in vaccinations or childhood immunizations significant enough to cause concern? Absolutely. Uh, so we do not need to wait a very long time after we see a decline in immunization to then see outbreaks in the communities. Now, you can imagine... Um, you know, uh, if there is an outbreak of measles, for instance, or a whooping cough, currently our healthcare infrastructure is burdened with COVID-19. Now, can you imagine superimposed on the back of that, we have an outbreak of measles? Hmm. Nasia, let's talk specifically about the COVID-19 vaccine. Should that be developed in the near future? We are all hoping for a vaccine within the next year or so. Should those vaccines be administered to children um, or infants, given that they do not uh, carry a great risk of serious effects from the disease itself? Yes, so it's well appreciated uh, uh, currently that uh, children are less uh, susceptible to severe outcomes of COVID-19. But at the same time, I caution against taking a blanket rule. Uh, there may be some exceptions amongst children where we do find COVID-19 infections and severe outcomes as well. So especially when it comes to access to vaccination. Uh, at Pasture, we always ensure equal access across different communities, age groups, and so forth. Now, see, I want to ask you a bit of a contentious question. Um, a lot of people who are skeptical about vaccines or who are have taken an anti-vax stance, uh, believe that they shouldn't be discriminated against because of their personal choices. They feel they have a right to make choices about their own health and the health of their children. What should be our social stance? Um, should we be accepting of that? Or is this issue bigger than that because of the need for herd immunity? This is a really good question. Um, and my response to this question is we always need to be fully cognizant that we do live in a democracy and we do have freedom of speech. But in the same time, I'd like to caution in terms of how we use our freedom. Uh, we must not become victims of our own autonomy. Now, whilst immunization is not mandatory in South Africa, my message to the anti-vax community is simple. You are playing with lives. Mm. 
As human beings, we are arrogant species. Uh, we believe we rule the earth, but actually, we look at the mercy of viruses and bacteria. Each and every year, human beings, particularly children less than five, die in the millions as a result of bacterial and viral infection, many of which can be easily prevented with vaccination. A lot of these viral and bacterial infections are difficult to diagnose because clinical symptoms are ambiguous. Laboratory tests may not be sensitive enough for an accurate diagnosis. And even if a patient were to be correctly diagnosed, treatment is not always a guarantee. And so really, the only tool we have as a species to protect ourselves is immunization. And this has been no more relevant than under the current context of COVID-19. I say my final question to you, I was speaking to uh, Dr. Kendrick from the UK a little bit earlier, who was talking about um, an unwillingness from the medical or pharmaceutical community to entertain any questions about the safety of vaccines. Surely both the public and medical professionals should be encouraged to challenge the safety and efficacy of vaccines to make sure that we are always 100% safe, that we are always improving upon technologies. Why is there this lack of appreciation for people's need to feel comforted and safe? Um, so I can speak from the standpoint of Sanofi Pasteur, and I assure you, um, uh, from the Sanofi Pasteur perspective, we encourage questions related uh, to vaccine effectiveness, safety, and so forth, because we really want to do all we can to reassure the community with regards to the, to the uh, tolerability and effectiveness of vaccines. So to answer your question, and I'm free to respond to the question because this is our policy at Sanofi Pasture as well, to speak freely on safety and efficacy, uh, to reassure parents, before a vaccine is introduced into the South African market, it goes through a number of checks. And I'd be safe to say that our South African regulatory authorities are quite strict, maybe even more so than many first world countries, before they sign off in allowing any medicinal product to enter into the country. The vaccines which are eventually permitted uh, to be allowed into the South African market, I assure you, have gone through decades of testing. Over hundreds and thousands of individuals across the globe, including South Africa. And until we are certain that the vaccine is tolerable for human consumption, will the vaccine be allowed into the South African market? And should anyone in the audience require any additional information with regards to safety, efficacy, effectiveness of our vaccines, please feel free to reach out to us. And we're very happy to uh, engage with you. All right, thank you very much for your participation. Nasia Sufi, Head of the Vaccines Unit and Export Market at Sanofi Pasture Vaccines in South Africa.